My people, na never here. <laughs> we are on a day. <laughs> APC last barrier. Labour Party and Peter Obi don't finally send APC to last barrier. They don't arrow IP APC. Hi. Una no say Labour Party and Peter Obi na them be petitioner. INEC and the uh, APC don't present their final written statement. Na na Labour Party and Peter Obi almost forty six pages of violence. Four six of violence. My people. I make I not just talk to my mom and watch the video. <laughs> I know if you talk. Eh? In short, when I watch, listen to the video no longer, when I watch until the end, eh? then when I share the video, share and drop your comments. This one eh, is strong. <laughs> My people, I will see you now. These lawyers have replied to the final written address of Tinubu's lawyers. Their reply is a 42-page document. So, it's going to take more than one video for me to succinctly summarize that reply for you. But in this video, I'll be showing you how obese lawyers totally destroyed the argument that was made by Tinubu's lawyers to defend Tinubu's drug case. Now, let's get to it. One of the biggest issues raised against Tinubu in obese petition is the case of forfeiture of $460,000 drug money that was found in Tinubu's account while he was in the USA. And the United States District Court, Northern District, Illinois, Eastern Division, ordered Tinubu to forfeit the money. And he forfeited the money. Now, according to the Nigerian Constitution, precisely Section 137, Subsection 1D, a person shall not be qualified for election into the office of the president if he is under a sentence of imprisonment or fine for any offense or fraud or for any other offense imposed on him by any court or tribunal. Now, if you heard me well, the constitution said if the person is under a sentence of imprisonment or fine he is not qualified to be elected into the office of the president so when obi and his legal team saw imprisonment or fine they quickly included it in their petition that tinubu is not qualified to contest because he once forfeited four hundred and sixty thousand dollars back in the u.s and when the hearing began obi's legal team tendered the document of the four hundred and sixty thousand dollars for feature by tinubu as evidence and the tribunal accepted it now tinubu's lawyer looked up they looked down they looked left they looked right how do we go about this matter the document of the forfeiture has been submitted to the tribunal even the only witness that tinubu presented in court ended up confirming that there was a forfeiture that's senator <laughs> what are we going to do tinubu's lawyers asked they now decided to come up with a very silly argument they said, eh, it was a forfeiture, that it was not a fine, that it was not as if he paid a fine for an offense, that it was a forfeiture, not a fine, that he willingly gave up the money. He was not fined, that it was a civil forfeiture, not a criminal forfeiture or a fine. <laughs> so as I stand now, I'll just go to court and go and forfeit my money. Nothing happened, no allegation against me. I'll just go to court and forfeit my money. Is that possible? Then Obi's lawyers now destroyed that silly argument in their final address. Look at how they did it. They wrote, Respectfully, my noble lords, the cardinal question is whether a civil forfeiture under the US law can be equated to a fine under the Nigerian law. According to settled case law in the United States, and according to legal literature, the answer is yes. A forfeiture is the same as a fine. Then they used a well-known U.S. case as an example. In the well-known case of Austin versus the United States in 1993, the U.S. Supreme Court unanimously held that civil forfeiture ordered in an in-rem civil action is a fine and is a punishment whether criminal conviction is involved or not. The court relied on several authorities 
and held among other things that forfeit is the word that congress used for fine now let me remind you again that the only argument that Tinubu's lawyers have been able to come up with in this drug case matter is that forfeiture is different from fine because if it is established that forfeiture and fine are the same then section 137 subsection 1 d disqualifies tinubu from being able to contest for the office of the president so that is their argument but you can equally see how far obese lawyers have gone to defeat that argument obese lawyers have been able to prove that forfeiture is the same as fine they cited a popular case in the u.s the case between austin and the u.s where the u.s supreme court called for feature a crime they pointed out that for feature is the word that the u.s congress uses for the word fine then obese lawyers proceeded to use the legal literature to prove that for feature and fine are the same thing they said dictionaries of the time confirmed that fine was understood to include for feature and vice versa look at some of the examples they gave the it sheridan a general dictionary of english language 1780 unpaginated gave five definitions of fine number one he said a fine is a most number two he said a fine is a pecuniary punishment number three he said a fine is a penalty then number four he said a fine is a forfeiture he called fine forfeiture then the Sopra Dictionary gave definitions of forfeiture. Number one, he said a forfeiture is the act of forfeiting. Number two, he said a forfeiture is a most. Then number three, he said a forfeiture is a fine. So the Sopra Dictionary called forfeiture a fine. And the IT Sheridan Dictionary called a fine a forfeiture. Vice versa. Then the J. Cassie, a new dictionary, 1702, defined forfeits as fine or penalty have you now seen that these two words according to renowned dictionaries can be used interchangeably have you now seen that the argument put forth by tinubu's lawyers does not hold water so tinubu forfeiting four hundred and sixty thousand dollars which was proceeds of drug means he paid a fine of four hundred and sixty thousand dollars to that district court and according to section 137, subsection 1D of the 1999 constitution, that invalidates him. That means he was not qualified to contest in the first place. Now, while I admit that these issues are matters of the law and the final verdict rests with the court, some of them are so blatant. And we believe that if the judiciary go use their church mind, this can only go one way. And in other news, the crisis in the APC continues to deepen. Now there is a Yoruba version of the party and the Hausa Fulani version of the party. Remember, it was a CPC, a Hausa Fulani party, and the ACN, the Yoruba party, that joined together to form the APC. Now it be like say the glue or the gum where they take join them. It don't they give way. <laughs> <laughs> because every day now now quarrel eh me i like her like that may they continue to the quarrel so that judiciary go get the opportunity and the freedom to feel do what they supposed to do when the tribunal hit them with their verdict the shock go make them pafuka they no go fit recover 